Oh, hi! This week, everything is terrible still, but we're gonna just make the best of it, and we're just gonna lean into the madness. There's been a show that I actually marathoned through in one sitting on my birthday weekend, and other than the live stream I did with all of you on my birthday, that was like the highlight. And uh, yeah, uh, my partner and I watched the entirety of Netflix's Tiger King in one sitting, and what a ride. I do not support any of these people, but it is a fascinating documentary series. Yes, there are things I wish they had talked about more and follow it up with. It was just like such a choice way to distract my brain from the hellscape we are currently living in. I'm thankful for it for that at the very least. Also, I don't know if you know this, but my name is Joe. Not with an E, but uh, I feel like it is my social obligation to make some type of Joe Exotic worthy outfit this week. If for no other reason than I found this fucking shirt that I actually took the sleeves off of for a Dr. Frankenfurter costume I made years ago. That's probably a more sane project. I'll put a little card up here if you would like to watch that. What really, really gave me the inspiration for this was finding this fabric in my stash. It's actually fabric that I've owned since I was probably 13, well before I owned a sewing machine. I did use a swatch of this for my Hedwig costume. It's like a little mini ascot necktie situation. And I think I used it for sleeves on a shirt that I did a bad job putting together. But yeah, there's too much of this fabric and it was calling to me and deserves to finally be used for something. And uh, I think this is a worthy project. I mean, it's probably in the thumbnail, but I have more planned than just constructing a top. So let's get through this part of the project and see what kind of shit we can get into. Here's what you need. Okay, so to do this Frankensteining of a project, I'm just gonna check like the stretchiness of everything. And I mean, this is actually less stretchy than the shirt, but they're, they're both close enough. I think we'll be good that we won't be busting any seams. Not that I plan to wear this often, but uh, good, good to check that they're compatible fabrics. I'm also gonna find a sleeve pattern of any kind. I mean, not like a raglan sleeve, just a regular set-in sleeve. And we're gonna poof out these sleeves to the max, you know, kind of in the same thought direction as like the higher the hair, the closer to God type thing. That's, that's what I'm thinking with these sleeves. So when I go to lay the fabric out, I wanna make sure the stretchiest direction is going across. That's where more of the movement's gonna be. Okay, I uh, took a little detour because I found out the Lindsinger found the Wayne died. I mean, I only saw them once? I think just once. One of my very dear friends. She even got to go up on stage. I can't find the picture or the video of it. It's got to be somewhere because I used to film everything. But yeah, her like gift to me for being a bridesmaid in her wedding was to go see Fountains of Wayne, which is one of her favorite bands. And it was great. And she got to go on stage and play tambourine during Hey Julie. And it's like one of my favorite concert adventure memories. And I know it was really special for her. So like the lead singer made that a really cool moment. Getting goosebumps thinking about it. But yeah, he's only 52. But it did make me go through his Wikipedia and she sent me a list of songs that he did. And that motherfucker wrote That Thing You Do from the movie That Thing You Do. And that song is one of my all-time favorite things to listen to. It's a little spoiler alert for Patreon pals that is on the birthday party mix CD that I'm making and sending out for everyone. The mail time perks will also be a little bit late just because I'm trying to avoid the post office as much as possible. Yeah, that song's in there because I love it so very much. But yeah, I had no idea who wrote it. So I just jammed out to it a little bit to cheer me back up. Not to bring everything down, but like things are scary. And uh, that is why <laughs> I think I enjoyed watching this stupid fucking show so much because it was such intense escapism. I almost said escapism. The beer is working. So I traced the sleeve cap. So like about as long as you would have a short sleeve. I've never done this before. I don't know how it's gonna go. I've only done like a middle inset. So just the center of the sleeve was real poofy for like Victorian style costumes I used to work on. So we're gonna see how this goes. I did draw five lines, if you can see them all, all pivoting from the same point. We're gonna cut those down, but not through this spot down here. So leave like, you know, a quarter inch or so. One other fun thing about uh, that thing you do that I don't know that I've told any of you is that, uh, I mean, like my sister was there to witness it, but <laughs> when I was a kid, I think that movie came out in like 96. So I was seven or eight when one of my aunts forced me and the cousin I'm closest with 
to sing at my grandmother's graduation. She went and got her bachelor's degree in her 70s, which is so rad. I miss that woman so fucking much. But yeah, we sang at like a lion's club in the three songs we did. How Soup Pool Corner by Kenny Loggins, <laughs> Mbop by Hanson, and That Thing You Do by The Wonders. And are you ready to hear what our very good band name was, meaning like my uncle played guitar and her and I sang. Thank God there's probably no footage of this anywhere. We were the goobers. So that's a little background into why I am the way I am. Weird, weird to think about. But that thing you do is, ugh, I love bandstand music so much. That was my preferred like Beatles era. Oh man. Now of course that song is stuck in my head, but there are worse things. Ah, oh, it's such a jam. Anyways, let us focus on what we were trying to get done here. So I decided on just three slits because I fanned them out a lot <laughs> and this seems poofy enough for someone that hasn't really done this before. I taped them to another piece of scrap poster board and I just fanned them out and even them out. I just like measured the distance from this tip to this tip and matched that across all these. It's about four inches and we're just gonna reline up this curve and kind of even it out. All right, yeah, so I am just tracing around all of this. I do think this means that when I put in my gathering marks, I need it to start right around here and then end over on this side. And that should give us like a normal sleeve shape, I think. But I'm also not sure. What is happening? I mean, listen, we're gathering a stretch material anyway, so like there's gonna be plenty of forgiveness with this. So I'm not like real worried. All right. So here's the shape we're working with, maybe. Like you can kind of tell where the sleeve starts to get weird is like right here, right here, but I did put little marks and that's where my gathering stitches are gonna start and end because that's where we added distance between the little slits we made. And then if I take this regular ass sleeve pattern, I think if I lay it on top of here and like join things up back down here, maybe I just like smooth this out up to this point. I'm going to line it up here and then from this point where the end of the sleeve curve was like up here where I traced that's this point here. I'm going to make a dot where this ends except that's not at all centered. Here we go. Okay. Make dots where the sleeve comes back and then we're going to like ease this into the normal rest of the sleeve. Does that make sense? So let's cut this. And now if I just lay this on top of here, I should be able to continue it into just normal sleeve pattern. And we just got a bonkers shape up top that will get gathered into something else. Cool? Cool. Let's give this a shot. We do only have enough fabric to try this once, so fingers crossed. Let's definitely get some pattern lengths going. Ooh, I should get my mat under this and cut it out with my rotary cutter. Hell yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to do two rows of gathering stitches from those points I already showed you on the pattern. That's gonna be easier to point out than the fucking sheer fabric that's very flimsy in my hands. So it's honestly probably gonna wanna gather a bit while I'm sewing it because it's so thin and flimsy. That's fine, because it's doing some of the work for me. So whatevs. And yeah, I'll do that to both sleeves because you know, I have two arms, unlike someone in the show. God damn, I have a strong work ethic, but kudos to that person. <laughs> ooh, ooh, although before any actual gathering happens, shit, I, sh I already did one row and I should have done this before. Notch the center of the top of the sleeve. That will be helpful in fitting this into place. Okay, so it's time to put the sleeve underarm seams together. Okay, so my sleeve is right sides together. So I'm gonna flip it right sides out. I should be serging this as I go, but honestly, like it's so fucking busy and I'm gonna wear this tonight and that's probably it. Although who knows, maybe the world will have reopened by Halloween and uh, I'll get invited to a Halloween party and can go do stuff. But I'm gonna put it in my shirt. The shirt is inside out so that all this is going right sides together. I'm gonna line up that seam I just stitched, that underarm seam to the side seam find that notch I put in the top center, line that up with the shoulder seam. The bottom sections of the sleeve can get pinned in pretty evenly along here. Oh, also I did that 
sleeve seam with a zigzag stitch because I want to give it some room to stretch and I'll be doing the same with this. Although I'm just going to make sure the stitches are narrow enough that it fits between the two gathering stitches I did. But I put like a quarter inch between each gathering stitch. But yeah, that part that isn't gathered, I can just line up smoothly up to where the gathering stitches start. So I'll have some end points for the gathers. It's time consuming and tedious, so I don't like being rushed doing this stuff, but I do genuinely enjoy inserting gathered sleeves. Okay, so once I have the ungathered parts pinned in place, and that top center point, we have all of this extra on the left side and then on the right side of that top center pin. So I'm just gonna pull whatever thread is thicker. I kept a really thin thread in my bobbin so that the top thread would be thicker and like that's what I'm gonna pull on because it's less li likely to break. But I mean, most of the time I wind my bobbin with the same thread that is on the top. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter, just as long as you're pulling on either the top threads or the bottom threads. And yeah, just tug them and try to keep the gathers kind of even until you have taken up all that excess space. Okay, I got both sleeves pinned in. Like I said, I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch around the whole thing and just keep my stitches between the gathering stitches. I think we're like one step away from having the shirt done. Although maybe it'll be the last step. We'll see how lazy I'm gonna be. All right, I'll see you on the other side. Oh boy. Okay. I need to give you all a second to prepare yourselves because last frame I was, you know, normal me. And now I have become my final form. What am I doing? <laughs> I think this is my favorite part of the whole thing. God, it's too floofy. This is just a regular blonde wig because I have dark hair that are shaved on the sides. I, I'm not mad about it. Also, my eyes are a lot darker than his. And also I, I go cross-eyed when I don't have my glasses on. So I try to do his eyeliner, but... Uh, I certainly don't have the same <laughs> face shape or anything. But yeah, this tiny, was that not the most bothersome thing of the entire series? Is that fucking skin tag eyebrow ring? That's what my sister called it and it, it makes me cringe and want to not be a human being, but uh, it, it perfectly describes it. I'm pretty proud of these sleeves. If we can talk about the actual sewing project, <laughs> for a second. Yeah, I mean, if it was out of a woven with a lot of body, it'd be floofier, but it's like a drapey knit. So, you know, you can only get so much volume that way, but I'm not mad about it. It was a successful pattern hack. I, I somehow learned a thing doing this stupid fucking costume. <laughs> oh, bless. I fucking can't. Okay, so this is the whole outfit I put together. God, I hate this part, but you know, it is what it is. I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything with the cuffs. It's just rolling up on itself. And like I said, it's just for this fucking video. So whatever. <laughs> I did pair this insane top with a pair of some cut off denim shorts because that, that feels appropriate. It's some like jean hot pants. <laughs> I would joke about dressing Bert up as a tiger or something, but I, uh, I've put him through enough with some of the other costumes. I can't, I can't justify doing this to him. This has been quite a way to spend an evening. Clipping this wig back, uh, I mean, it's it's too voluminous back here, but uh, this this is more effective than I was expecting. It's also like a $4 wig from, I don't know, Party City or something from a very long time ago. This was really fun. I needed, I needed this. I needed to just do like something absolutely buck wild and uh, just have fun with it. I enjoyed it a lot. I am 100% going to go watch that thing you do now. I've actually been watching a bunch of movies that are some of my favorites. Just, you know, oh god, I, I need to wash <laughs> this fucking handlebar thing off. Hold on one second. I also forgot I had the stupid fucking eyebrow ring on and uh, <laughs> that would have been such a great thing to like wake up and forget was on my face and go to work tomorrow and just have everyone be like, how's quarantine going? <laughs> that doesn't count as quarantine if I'm still going to work some days of the week. I don't know. Trying to be safe in the madness. I hope you are all trying to be safe in the madness. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get through the damn thing. All of you commenting on the videos and doing these live streams has really been helping me get through it. I hope it's a little bit helpful, at least like a dumb distraction. I am so bad at staying on task. So I always set out to do a project or at least some project prep when I do a live stream and then none of it ever happens. So 
at least it's a good excuse to just like sit and hang out with people and that's also okay it's okay to not be productive all the time I was beating myself up a lot because I wasn't able to focus on things at the beginning of all this that's getting a little better this week but I'm also making sure to give myself some downtime. Just try to be kind to yourself and to others. Everyone's trying their best, or at least I, I hope they are trying their best. Uh, yeah, I know I mentioned my Patreon earlier. If you'd like to come find me over there, I'll link in the description as well as like coffee, Etsy, my Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram. If you want to hang out other places, that's rad. I do have a Discord open for all my Patreon tiers, and that's been a lot of fun seeing everyone's projects and their sewing assistants or crafting assistants, not sewing exclusive. It's just a really good excuse for me to see other people's pet pictures so thank you for contributing everyone and uh yeah I'm actually really impressed with how the actual technique worked I don't want to make any promises I'm not going to end up keeping but uh, gathered skirts on the horizon we'll see if another project comes up before then but it's definitely uh coming soon as well as some other t-shirt projects I got a super rad shirt from Amanda so thank you so so much I think I showed it in the live stream but she spoiled me on my birthday and sent me this cute as shit shirt. So I did cut out some pattern pieces for a raglan sleeve. I think that's the plan for this, but we'll see how I'm feeling when I actually get into cutting it up. So thank you again for that. And yeah, some other t-shirt projects on the horizon. I've been brainstorming with Alyssa a little bit. So thank you for chatting with me about ideas. Oh, and for those of you wondering about the face masks, I will be making more to donate. I did finish a batch to send to my mom's work because she's still working with the public a lot. I have nothing additional to contribute and I'm just really, really glad that people are doing that though it's crazy we even have to get to this point that home sewers are supplying medical things but you know we're gonna get through it okay let's not let's not go down that road let us just indulge in a fancy beverage and uh watch a favorite movie if you're not into that thing you do some favorites i've revisited are benny and june amelie oh my god amelie the fucking best and then for tv shows the mighty boosh i could watch that all day every day um, and then the Cornetto Trilogy, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, never go wrong with those. And additionally, also watching Spaced, which is the show that that group did before Shaun of the Dead. So let me know what your go-to feel-good movies are. Not necessarily in the film category, feel-good movies, but what movies you feel good watching. And yeah, I will see you all back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. You're my favorite Fox Rose, and I just can't take it anymore.